Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part two of our series on PC hardware for the eighth grade. Now, we've already covered the basics of what we're going to be kind of going over in this unit, right? And today we're going to get into the nitty gritty, all right? Now, there's a couple things I want you to understand. This is not for, well, computer nerds, because that's not the point of this, right? So if you're sitting there going through the information going, Mr. C, this is for computer nerds. I don't want to know that. Well, remember what the purpose is, right? That we are looking at the things for um, in which an entrepreneur might need to know about computers and computer hardware. And while we are going to be diving a little bit more into the internal components, we are going to stay focused on the... Um, stuff that's important for a business person or an entrepreneur to know okay um and yes we are going to get going to get technical because sometimes some students want to know that technical information right or if we're considering a field or a pursuit of a degree in information technology then we're going to have to know the technical stuff right so this is going to be for both our technically advanced people who like the computer nerd stuff and then the not so technically advanced and if you're on even in the middle or on one side or the other you're going to be okay if you follow along. So let's get this going. Back when I was in sales, I found that it was really easy to communicate to people about the components of a computer by relating it to something they were familiar with. Okay. In this case, I found it easy to relate the computer components to an office. All right. And think about what your office has, right? And, and noting a couple things, I'm going to move my mouse here, right? But you can see it here. You got the office worker. Okay. You have some things on a desk that's ready to be pulled up on a moment's notice, right? You got some output devices, right? You have some storage devices, okay? You got some lights, okay? And some other things, all right? So yeah, you got a lot of things going on in this office, right? And believe it or not, these all kind of relate to the components of a computer, all right? The engineers are smart like that. So yeah, you can relate these to the components of a computer. All right, so let's take a look at a couple things. By the way, that loud noise is a little bit of rain. It's all part of the gig, right? All right, so let's take the first thing here. Go ahead and get my clicky working. Click. All right. The user. The user, as we said the other day, is the person who is using the computer, right? Right now, Mr. C is the user of this device, and I'm recording the video, right? The computer is doing what I say and what I input, right? Because I am using the device. I am specifying that, right? So who's the user? This person, right? Of this device. Who's the user of the computer that you're using right now? You are right you 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 get the idea you're the user all right computers are built to serve us all right and do what we tell it to do okay so you are the boss all right now there is a case of a computer we're going to look at cases in a few minutes okay the case is kind of like in the office you have the walls the exterior walls the roof it's what protects the office from the outside elements it keeps the inside elements comfortable okay pretty simple like a building right you got your four walls a roof you get the idea right all right so that's the case the PSU stands for uh, power supply unit okay we're gonna look at that in detail a little bit later on the power supply unit powers the computer it brings electricity into the computer obviously this person right here right this uh, individual is looking at a computer the lights are on the computer screen itself right the monitor okay that means that there is power in the building and I could see a light here now if you're saying well mr. C the lights are on because of the outside light and the sunlight well there's evidence here that the light is on here and the lights on over there but you get the idea right there is definitely evidence of electricity coming in to this office itself all right now the BIOS, okay? The BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, right? And then, of course, you got the UEFO, all right? The firmware version of the virus, or, or BIOS, okay? Think of that like lights, all right? If this building right here, this office had zero windows in it with no sunlight coming in, okay? And it was pitch black, how does the person who's using the computer know where things are at? Or how does the worker know where things are at, right? Well, it's simple, okay? You gotta turn the lights on. You can't just feel around and stumble around or else you're not gonna be efficient. The bias lets 
the computer hardware and the processor know where things are at. Again, I'm going to explain that here shortly, okay? Then you got the actual CPU, okay? The CPU is the worker inside the computer, right? It is the one doing all the thinking inside, right? All that, that, that noodle, that brain is just going, in, and it's a fast worker, right? In fact, some workers are so fast that they can work like there's almost four, six, or eight people working at the same time. Pretty cool stuff, right? So the CPU, central processing unit, is kind of like the worker, okay? Inside the office, you also have um, uh, ways to communicate, okay? And that's what the motherboard does, right? It's the nervous system, all right, of the CPU, all right? The nervous system. It kind of like sends the signals and information, data, power, where needed, okay? You also have the RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory. Again, we're going to go into details here shortly, right? That RAM is like the desk, okay? Now think about it. If you have a big desk you have more room to spread information around, right? And your CPU can operate more efficiently. But if you have a small desk, are you going to be able to operate as efficiently? Example, if this part of the desk did not exist here and you're limited to this, can they be as efficient if they're really inundated with a lot of work? Okay, the answer is no. Okay, and then of course, you have filing cabinets, right? Place to store information. And that's what our solid state drives and hard disk drives do, all right? So again, to cover this information and to kind of rehash it, you got the user. Essentially, it's like the boss telling the worker what to do, okay? You have the case which surrounds things and protects things of the office. You've got the PSU, the power supply unit, which brings electricity into the office. You got to turn the lights on when you get there, right? All right, because in, in, you know, you got to know where things are at. The worker has to know where things are at, okay? Um, and then you got the CPU, which is the worker himself or her, well, yeah, themselves. You got the motherboard, which permits communication and flow of power from the CPU. You got your workstations, um, desk, excuse me, which is like the RAM. And of course, you got your storage, all right? So let's get to the next slide. All right, cases. As we said, cases are what protects the internal components here, right? Now, cases can be made out of a variety of things. What they are designed to do is they are designed to protect, store, and house the components of a computer, okay? You can have all the components of the computer spread out in front of you and just plug together with wires and cables, and it'll still work, okay? Believe it or not, it'll still work. What the case does is it keeps it from uh, protected from dust, electricity, water, moisture, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, case materials might be a various amount of things. I've seen, um, uh, like this case right here, you got uh, more than likely some steel and some plastic, maybe some aluminum. Or this case right here, where you got some Lexan or plexiglass, and you got some cooling, and you got some other things going on on this guy. This is a very custom case. This is a standard case, right? I've seen computer cases made out of Legos, wood, plastic, um, so on and so forth. As long as it's a good material to hold and protect it, right? Now, most typically, cold rolled steel or galvanized steel, so basically metal, okay, are what cases are made out of. If you're in my workstation right now, the Dell computers in front of you, uh, their cases are made out of cold steel or cold rolled steel and plastic, okay? And, um, you know, that's what makes them up, okay? Now, you might have different types of cases. You got big cases and small cases. Well, these case sizes have specific names, okay? You got micro cases, which are the really, really tiny ones, not like a tablet or a laptop. We're just talking about desktops right now, okay? But you got your micro cases, which are small. You got your mini cases, right? Uh, which are about 16 inches tall, okay? You got your mid cases, which are 18 inches tall. And you got your full tower cases. I would say that this one right here is either a full or a mid. This is actually because it only has three bays in front of it. This is a mid. If it was four, it would have a couple more bays on top of it. You know, you can't see the bays behind my screen, my monitor, but whatever. All right, you get the idea, okay? And again, this guy is a custom case, okay? Now, why would somebody want to have a bigger case as opposed to a small case? It depends on space. It depends on space saving. If they want a big case, they want to do more with it. You can hold more drives and more devices inside the case. Obviously, smaller cases are a little bit more flexible on where you can put them, right? And there you go. All right, so that covers the cases. Next thing, the CPU. CPU is not an abbreviation for computer, okay? 
the system unit. It's not an abbreviation, okay? CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. It's what our brain does, sort of, but a brain is really an overdramatic idea of what it is, right? The CPU is actually better um, thought of like a worker give, being given instructions. Okay, worker, I want you to calculate 2 plus 2. And the worker goes, okay, 4. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay, worker, I want you to move this file to this file. Okay, this file, this file, done. Okay, that's all the worker does. Okay, it just does the thinking and it performs those actions. It doesn't store information like our brain does. All right, so um, it interprets and performs the basic functions that operate the computer. Pretty simple. All right, now here's the cool thing. What if I told you that inside of a processor, you might have one processor doing the work? You might have two processors in that one chip, right? Or you might have four, six, eight processors. Why would you want to have eight processors in one chip? That's just crazy, Mr. C. Well, the reason being is think about it like this, right? Efficiency, okay? It comes down to efficiency and processing power. Okay, think of it like this, all right? If I have one worker who's really, really fast, okay, he's going to be able to perform things really fast. But if I give that worker a lot of things to process, he's going to have to do it one step at a time, one calculation at a time, right? And he can only do it in the order that information was received. Now, you give that worker some help. I'm going to give you an extra worker. Okay, the primary worker is going to take on this work, and we're going to pass on that load to the second worker. Sounds a little bit more efficient, right? I mean, think about when you have group work. Doesn't it become a little bit less stressful on you? And doesn't it become a little bit easier for you to perform the tasks within the group if everybody's doing the equal amount of work? Now, take that and multiply that, right, up to eight different workers, okay? Now, if you don't like the worker analogy, that's fine, okay? Think about a highway, okay? Now, on a highway, you have information going one direction on a two-lane highway and information going in the other direction on the two-lane highway, right? Well, what happens when you increase that to a four-lane highway or a six-lane highway? Everybody's speed might be limited to the same speed, like the speed limit. If speed limit's 55, people shouldn't be doing over 55 miles an hour, but your total amount of vehicles that are passing through a four or eight line highway is much different than say a two lane highway, right? The same concept applies in processors. Now, most modern processors come with um, two core, four core, six core, or eight core, okay? Core being the amount of workers inside. All right, so speed is uh, measured in hertz okay hertz not because oh it hurts it's sore okay that's not the hertz we're talking about if you took science class you learned that hertz is cycles per second okay cycles per second okay in other words in this case how many um calculations can be performed in a single cycle okay in a single electric cycle okay well it's measured in hertz and most times Modern processors will measure in the gigahertz range, okay? That means that there are, well, not one million, one billion processes being calculated in a single electric cycle. One billion calculations. That is a lot of data. Okay, a lot of data. Okay, that's a whole lot faster than the information coming in from the internet. Okay, that's a whole lot faster, at least in terms of our offices and homes and so on and so forth. Yeah, modern processors are really fast. Now, you take that cycle, those, that 1 billion cycles, 1 billion calculations per second, times that by eight workers. Holy free holies. Okay, yeah. It's fast, all right? Now, uh, inside the processor, you might have uh, the cache. Not cache, not catchy. It's the RAM or the desk space of the processor. We're going to cover RAM here shortly, okay? So there you go. Now, certain 
processors match up with certain boards. You have to match the socket up, okay? For our computer nerds in the house, we know that you can't put a certain brand processor with another certain brand socket. It's not going to work, okay? Um, so you get the idea. Just like taking certain USB plugs and trying to plug them into our modern phones, it may or may not work. Or if you have an Apple you're using a lightning cable and you try to plug in USB-C, it's not going to work, right? Sockets. It's really important you match the sockets if you ever custom build one. All right. All right. Moving forward. The PSU. All right. The PSU stands for Power Supply Unit. It takes the raw power coming into the office, right, or the area or the room, right, and turns that into useful system power, okay? Because if you were to take the components of a PC and plug them straight into the wall, you get a really cool light show and smoke, right? Not really cool for a uh, motherboard, right? So, what the power supply does is it transforms raw electrical power into useful system power, okay? Um, some of the transformation is um, handled by the motherboard, okay? And controlled through other things like BIOS and UEFI, right? Um, some components, they require they have their own additional power supply leads. If you ever have built a gaming computer, okay, and you see the gaming computer, the video card itself has additional power coming in, uh, to help supply the additional needs for that gaming video card, okay? Um, so that's a great example of that, all right? Now, here's the cool thing, right? People always wonder, well, if the power supply is too big, my system won't be able to keep up and it'll actually explode. It's actually the exact opposite. See, here's the thing, right? If you underpower the computer, the, uh, the PSU actually has to work harder to keep up with the demands, right? Which causes additional heating, okay? Through amperage and all that kind of good stuff. You know, we're not going to go through Ohm's law, but you get the idea, right? So, if it's working harder, okay, it's not going to be able to keep up, all right? It's like trying to put a Prius motor, okay, in the electric motor in the Prius into a big diesel dually, all right? It'll do it but it ain't going to be happy about it and it'll eventually give up, all right? So you want to make sure that if you ever custom build a PC that it's either matched or more powerful than the system requirements, okay? All right, next slide. We've been using this fancy word BIOS and UEFI, right? BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, and that has recently changed to the UEFI, right, which is a basically a firmware uh, flash thing, right, that's stored on the system itself or on the motherboard, right? Now, um, firmware, which wakes the computer from a cold start. Remember I told you about how in an office, right, may not have windows, right? So imagine a dark office with no windows, with no nothing in it, right? The worker goes in, and I got the command, okay, worker, the user wants to use me, worker, go ahead and start working, please. Well, how is the worker going to know where the filing cabinet is? How is the worker going to know where the communication lines are, right? You've got to turn the lights on, okay? So that's what the BIOS basically does is it helps set configurations, right, to help that worker operate efficiently, okay? It controls and regulates data, voltage, power, turns on and off components, right? It is basically a read-only memory that is built into the motherboard, okay? Pretty simple, all right? Now, UEFI stands for, this is a fancy term, computer nerds, are you ready? Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. It basically works like a BIOS, but it is a more uh, powerful version, okay? And it is a lot more complex than the standard BIOS, okay? So it's a modern version, allows for graphic user interface and allow a little bit more uh, adjustability within the system, okay? Older computers, you're going to see BIOS. Now, when I say older computers, up to about maybe five years ago, okay? And then newer systems will either use the UEFI or still rely on the BIOS. Again, it depends on the motherboard, the brand, the manufacturer, all right? All right, moving forward. The motherboard, yes. The motherboard, it's married to the fatherboard, oh yes. Well, there is really a fatherboard, right? But the motherboard in this case is the uh, main um, uh, or primary circuitry component of the PC, all right? It's what allows the worker or the CPU to communicate with all the other components, whether that's the video, the audio, um, RAM, and so on and so forth, the communications and the ports and all that kind of good stuff that we'll learn about a little bit later, okay? It is the nervous system. So think about our spine, right? Our spine, right back here, right, connects our brain and our brain stem to all the little parts of our uh, bodies, right? Like there's a signal right now going from this thing, right, inside my skull, 
down through my brainstem to my spine, out my arms, to my fingers, right? To tell them what to do. And then what the really cool thing is if I whack it with something, right? No. All right. I sense pain. So it's sending that information back, okay? So what it does is it facilitates communication. So let's take a look at some definitions here, right? It allows the CPU to communicate with the components and it distributes electrical power and data as needed, right? So it's sending power and data back and forth as needed, okay? Just like our spine sends out information to the rest of our body, okay? Usually includes the BIOS or the UEFI for the PC, okay? Now it may contain certain components built in, okay? So this is really important, especially for those who ever want to build their own computers, right? If, if you have an integrated stuff, like integrated sound card, which most motherboards have nowadays, right? If it has an integrated network card, which most motherboards have nowadays, right? Um, then those things are already built into the motherboard, which is fine, okay? That works. Now, thinking about video cards, we're going to learn that video cards actually take up space and resources, okay? And um, well, we'll talk about that later on, right? So it might have those components integrated. Now, some components may not be integrated, like wireless, Wi-Fi. You might have a desktop with built-in Wi-Fi, or you might have to go get a separate device to have that device be, or that computer work as in with Wi-Fi. Okay, so um, it may contain these components, video cards, sound cards, network cards, right? Now, here's the catch, okay? If it has a built-in video card or a built-in sound card, okay, it uses system resources to help operate, which is fine, okay? Which is fine. But here's the cool thing, right? If you get its own video card and you disable the internal video card on the uh, motherboard, so you say, okay, motherboard, I don't want to use your video card anymore. I want to use this fancy new device that I just bought, okay? You free up system resources. And what happens when you free up system resources? The computer can work more efficiently and more uh, do more things, which makes it more powerful, okay, as far as computing power is concerned. All right. All right. So dedicated peripherals will more than likely use their own RAM. And we're going to learn about RAM shortly. Random access memory. OK, so it helps the computer operate efficiently. All right. Um, yeah. Here's the cool thing, though. If somebody builds their computers, you just can't take parts from like a 19 or a 2015 model and expect it to work with a 2020 model. In as much as you can't take something from a 2000 model and plug it into the 2010 model. It's got to be matched. You got to have matched components, okay? Um, this is especially true when you're dealing with Macs and PCs to a certain extent, especially with the internal components of the computer and the peripherals, right? Remember, peripherals, everything attached to the main computer, all right? All right, that brings me to the end of this lesson, and we did it in less than 25 minutes. Hopefully, you're not taking a nap because I need you to take care of these few questions. You should be able to answer which processor is more efficient and tell me why. Think about the multiple workers, right? You should be able to answer the true or false question. Simply look at the slide, right? And then you should tell me, based off of what I told you about power supplies and having one that's a little bit more powerful than needed and one that's a little bit less powerful than needed, what the difference is, right? And what might cause more damage. Ergo, damage usually comes from heat, okay? That kind of thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave you at it, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.